Hi, this is Dr. Rob Rosberg from Hospital for Special Surgery, and I wanted to discuss with you knee arthritis, when to do osteotomy, partial knee replacement, or total knee replacement. This is a uh, uh, topic that comes up quite often and uh, is a source of confusion for a lot of patients, so I'm going to give you my uh, perspective on the decision making. There are different options for the surgical treatment of knee arthritis and they include osteotomy and realignment, which is joint preservation, partial knee replacement, or total knee replacement. In any case of arthritis of the knee, the concept of malalignment is very important. When a patient has um, no deformity, meaning the line from hip to ankle goes right through the center of the knee, the forces on the inside and outside part of the knee are low and equal, represented by the blue and red lines. When there is bow leg deformity, as is illustrated by this orange line, where in this case there's nine degrees of deformity, the pressure on the inside part of the knee goes up quite a bit, and the pressure on the outside part of the knee goes down quite a bit. And that's why you get abnormal forces across the knee. Deformity overloads the respective compartments of the knee. For that reason, people with bow leg deformities develop medial compartment arthritis of the knee. As you can see here with bone on bone changes noted on the medial or inside part of the knee. And people with knock knee deformities develop arthritis on the outside part of the knee or the lateral compartment. This is my algorithm for the surgical treatment of knee arthritis. Osteotomy is indicated for the young patient with moderate arthritis and a bow leg or knock knee deformity. We use this type of planning to determine the location and magnitude of the osteotomy or bone cut for the deformity correction. Here's an example of a 40 year old man with um, medial compartment arthritis. You can see the narrowing of the medial joint space. The long x-ray shows that the force, the line between hip and ankle, doesn't run through the center of the knee, but rather to the inside part of the knee. And surgical planning involves picking the um, osteotomy location and magnitude, which is the intersection between the red and green lines. In surgery, this is executed with an opening wedge osteotomy in the top part of the tibia and the, the uh, line between the hip and ankle now runs through the center of the knee. During surgery we perform arthroscopy and we note that there are some potholes within the knee where cartilage has been degenerated and where there's exposed bone. I performed microfracture and also added stem cells and one year later you can see that there has been substantial regeneration of cartilage. The long x-rays show that the um, the leg has been straightened and the, um, the varus or bow leg deformity has been corrected. Force has been removed from the inside part of the knee. And you'll note that the medial joint compartment illustrated by the green arrow has been opened up. The osteotomy is healing nicely. This is a reminder of what it looked like preoperatively where there was much more force on the inside part of the knee and um, it has been since unloaded. The combination of uh, mechanical unloading of the inside part of the knee and also cartilage regeneration techniques are what makes this technique successful as a joint preservation technique. This is a different patient showing a before and after. The before is on the left, the after is on the right. You can see the, um, the blue line representing the, the force going through the medial compartment of the knee beforehand and how it has been shifted away from the medial compartment of the knee. The osteotomy is healing nicely. The congruency in the joint has been improved and the joint space on the medial side has been substantially improved. Next, let, let's look at uh, knock knee deformity. This is a 25 year old woman who's starting to develop pain on the outside parts of her knee. She also has um, a patella instability. In surgery, we do a distal femoral osteotomy, opening wedge, 
and we realign the leg so that the line between the hip and the ankle now goes through the center of the knee. This is the uh, long x-ray and clinical picture afterward showing the uh, legs straight, mechanical axis improved, the uh, patella now are stable because the Q angles have been improved, and you can see the osteotomies have healed up very nicely. In this situation, the deformity is bigger, and it's going to require correction above and below the knee with a distal femoral and proximal tibial osteotomy. This is a 35-year-old woman who has um, arthritis in her knee and is having difficulty walking without crutches. You can see that the uh, hip to ankle lines run through the lateral compartment of the knee. She's got lateral compartment arthritis. Her kneecaps are subluxated and she's got uh, patellofemoral arthritis. The surgical planning here uh, requires an osteotomy in the proximal part of the tibia at the intersection of those lines and in the distal femur at the intersection of those lines. This is the distal femoral osteotomy. This is the tibial osteotomy done with a intramedullary nail and a blocking screw and fix it or assisted technique. And here you can see the uh, femur and tibia osteotomies healed. The legs have been very well realigned. The valgus has been corrected. This is another example of a patient with uh, valgus deformities and early lateral compartment arthritis of the knee. The before is on the left and the after is on the right, corresponding to the clinical pictures of before on the left and after on the right. So let's move on to partial knee replacement. This is indicated when there's advanced arthritis in one compartment of the knee and there is mild deformity. This is illustrated here. This is a 50-year-old uh, woman who has bone-on-bone -bone, um, degeneration of the medial compartment of the knee. This is the templating for a partial knee replacement and this is the execution of the partial knee replacement. That's the femoral component, the tibial component, and the plastic sits in between. We published a paper um, um, explaining uh, how one can predict whether the uh, deformity is going to be adequately corrected with a partial knee replacement. And it is important to choose partial knee replacement when the um, arthroplasty is going to adequately correct the deformity. Now total knee replacement is indicated for advanced arthritis in the entire knee for the older patient who has moderate to severe deformity. This is illustrated here. This is a 60-year-old patient with tricompartmental arthritis of the knee with a severe varus deformity. This is the femoral component, the tibial component, and the plastic in between. In this patient, um, the, a partial knee replacement would not have been satisfactory in correcting the overall deformity and the arthritis was not just in one compartment and for that reason a total knee replacement enabled correction of the deformity and comprehensive treatment of the arthritis. This is another example of a patient who is um, 80 years old. You can see there's severe arthritis noted on the left side. There's complete subluxation of the joint, the femur is sliding off of the tibia. There's instability, a lot of pain. Um, the only treatment for this that is going to provide a satisfactory outcome is a total knee replacement. This is the femoral component. This is the tibial component. The plastic is in between. This provided correction of deformity, stabilization of the knee, and uh, treatment of the arthritis. There are situations where it's more complex, as illustrated here. This is a woman who has a large leg length discrepancy, an extraarticular deformity, and advanced arthritis of the knee. While she needs a knee replacement, we need to set the stage for the knee replacement by doing osteotomy, 
realignment and lengthening. The intersection of those lines represents the extraarticular deformity of the femur. We perform an osteotomy of the femur and insert a, an intramedullary nail, which is a lengthening nail. This allows us to uh, not only correct the deformity and straighten the femur, but also lengthen and gain six centimeters in this case. And then once that's healed, we remove the rod and then perform a knee replacement. This allows us to take uh, this situation with deformity, leg length discrepancy, and knee arthritis and turn it into um, this situation after implementing all of these uh, techniques. So in summary, osteotomy is indicated for the young patient with moderate arthritis and bow leg or knock knee deformity. It's a joint preservation technique and it doesn't burn bridges for a future uh, joint replacement. Partial knee replacement is a good technique for advanced arthritis in one compartment, but um, one has to be careful because it's only good for treating mild deformity. You can't correct severe deformity, and you need to make sure that um, the arthritis is localized to one compartment of the knee. Total knee replacement is a very, very uh, strong technique that allows um, the surgeon to treat advanced arthritis in the entire knee. It's best in the older patient and can be used for moderate uh, to severe deformity. I hope that this review of the surgical treatment of knee arthritis uh, and the algorithm that I presented to you has been helpful.